Hello, gang. Welcome to Sketching with Izzy. We are back on air. I wanted to apologize. Tuesday, I started up the Twitch and everything was going and I blue screened. My worst fears had happened. And uh, I had lots of uh, fun driver issues to try and sort out. So Tuesday was a total bust. That's on me. We'll continue our, our Martian painting here. But I just want to let you guys know that if you were waiting, uh, that's what happened. Sorry about that. Avid. Glad to have you here. You're awake. That's great. Cypher. <laughs> Alien Vertex. Hey, brother. Glad to see you on. That's awesome. Started one minute early. Well, I actually started the, uh, I started the stream two minutes late. So technically we're one minute late, I think. But I'm bad at math and that's always been a problem for me. So it's good to see you, man. I'm glad you could join us. That's so awesome. I hope things are good out in Venice Beach. Represent. Let me close and fix up my tabs here. Make my desktop pretty. Yeah, I hope everybody's doing good. I had a, a long day yesterday, the, the, the day job, and then I had a really awesome... I recorded a podcast with a new friend, a guy named uh, Siamak, and he's... Uh, He's he used to be a lead artist over at um, Sucker Punch, uh, and he's he's gone off freelance and he's been doing his own kind of art thing and getting into some different adventures. And one of the things he's doing now is a podcast. So hopefully I'll have uh, some links for you guys in the near future once he's edited that all up, because we talk about a lot of good stuff that I think is probably pretty pertinent to our discussions in here and. Uh, yeah, he's a real smart guy. Very, very entertaining chat that we had. Crazy as usual in Venice Beach. Ah, oh, I miss it. I imagine it's all the way back up to the, the same level of madness it was before at this point. Everybody's ignoring the, the kooky uh, virus we got floating around. So yeah, I think uh, some of you may remember that I talked last time when I started this one about one of my hobbies that I enjoy doing, uh, and obviously I don't get much, don't get to do very much with it these days is pinball, and one of my favorite games is this one right here. Oops, it's flipped. Ha! <laughs> Mars Attacks or Attack from Mars. Mars Attacks is a great movie, but this is different, even though it's got a similar theme and everything else. But I wanted to redesign these critters. I figured it would be something fun to do. So that's what we're doing today. We're just going to continue painting on this little goofy guy. You swear my hair changes every other day? It's because I don't mess with my hair. It just kind of does what it wants. <laughs> I cut my hair and try to shape it. But uh, the two times I've taken it to a stylist, it, it did not work out well for me. So I just cut my hair on my own and then kind of leave it to do whatever. But it, some days, some days it does get fully, fully out of hand, and I will put a hat on because <laughs> I just don't want to deal with it. I've had I've had curly hair now for forty years, and I still have no idea how to tame it so that it does what I want. <laughs> it's a it, an endless frustration. Yeah, I, it was always amusing trying to cut my hair on the boat, too, because I had really small mirrors to work with. So here it's it's much easier with the big, big mirrors. Did I cut it again this week, though? No. It's just like, it's a little wet. Once it's, once it's like fully dried out, it will kind of, it'll start doing its thing where it likes to go full eraser head. Kooky dukes. <laughs> The rocking of the boat and the scars. Yeah, it all adds up, doesn't it? All, all that running around with scissors. Like a maniac. Gonna transform up this part just a touch. Get it to fit his kooky cranium. Demage, welcome. How's it going? Ah, yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's so awesome having my friends in here. It's almost like we're hanging out again. Like the before times, the long, long ago. I'm definitely thinking with these legs that they're going to be more like fingers. Since his fingers are not going to be bony, they're all going to be kind of flappy <laughs> little noodles. <laughs> little finger needles. So I'm going to do a little bit of a homage to Oddworld here. Get some fingers. Everybody uh, working on any interesting paintings or drawings these days? Feel free to draw along. Get them wrinkles in. Ah, oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. Come over here. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm here for the ridiculous. Soften the, uh, the light side of these form shadows a little bit. Since we're doing a, con a concept piece, it's not really gonna be about doing uh, really hard out rendering. It's more about speed and uh, just generating the idea. I don't remember exactly how much time we've put in already, but I wanna say maybe it was an hour. So a couple of hours for a decent, uh, a decent sketch isn't bad for concept art. Let's see, one of my favorite things to do. Let us tone these lines, set them to multiply. I like, I like adding color to the lines because it, it creates a, a little bit of life for very little effort. We know my prime motivators. Say it with me, it's because I'm lazy. Terrible lazy. So because most of this, uh, this lower half of the face is gonna be in cast shadow from the primary light source, I know that I'm gonna wanna put in another light source somewhere to accentuate all of the details and visual interest here. So maybe some kind of interesting, cool fill light, you know, a skylight or something like that. Maybe we could do a bounce light from the red eyes. I don't know if we want them to necessarily be overtly emissive, but maybe. Um, I just, I, I don't want them to feel like flashlights is my worry because they're already kind of shaped like flashlights. Am I using the lines as an indication for ambient occlusion? Not really. Although if you think about it, when it comes to line in painting, that's basically what it is, is ambient occlusion. Um, I was drawing initially to do, to just figure out the forms and the shapes. So I was drawing how you would draw. But by virtue of having put in that information already, by switching the color, setting it to multiply, lessening it a little bit, I can, I can use that as my sort of ambient occlusion areas. And then I'm gonna erase out the top side where it would probably um, be in places it doesn't belong, like uh, places where it's fully lit. I think that's why I like doing the multiply with a lowered, uh, sorry, it's color, color burn, that's not good. 
I like them doing the multiply with a lower opacity because it doesn't affect the lights as badly and so it doesn't look like a line drawing as much on the light side of things. So the answer is no at first and then yes now, you are correct. <laughs> Big Liggins, hey, welcome. Glad you could join. Hope you're doing well. Can delete this. Ciao. No greetings for you guys. You require no more. You got it. Okay, just finish out this fill. And like I said with the la uh, the last episode, I'm not gonna do a uh, I'm not gonna do a cutout. I don't think. We're just gonna paint paint this. because he's got this big sort of umbrella element of his head blocking so much of the light, we're gonna get a lot of benefit out of emphasizing the light on the places that aren't covered. Because they'll be our strongest contrast reads. All of the rendering that's gonna happen inside, because as I mentioned, I wanna add a, a fill light to capture those details or, or imply them. Uh, this will give me, by, by creating a strong contrast on the outside, these, these lit parts, it's going to give me more room on the inside with subtle contrast to light and describe the form. You can see where that where the line work is causing overlap on the light, right? We just go in and we can erase it out. Places where it's too distracting, too strong, you can kind of just gently, with a very gentle touch, erase so that the opacity is diminished. You'll still have the structure without the defining aspects of the line. You're just you're allowing visual noise to live in there. Elijah, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Glad you could join us. All right. So before I get into um, lighting the interior, because really our focal point. So this this is an interesting challenge, and it's something uh, for students where. We haven't talked a whole bunch about this aspect of it. We, I, I have mentioned many, many times with critiques and things like that about how to control your focal point. And focal point in general, traditionally, is where your greatest contrasts of all the different features are going to live. Your greatest contrasts in shape, uh, value, color, hue, saturation, all that good stuff. That's the detail, of course, the greatest detail. That's going to be where your focal point is. And so one of the big pushes that I that I give to students is that you're going to want your strongest contrasts where your focal point is. And oftentimes the confusion comes with the idea that the strongest lights are where the focal point is. So I wanted to show you just now, I realize that this is going to be a valuable thing to talk about. I'm going to show you how bright I'm going to go with the light source from above that's going to kind of shroud this creature's face in shadow, right? And I'm gonna show you that it's not necessarily brightness that equals the, the focal point, it's the contrast. Contrast is the focal point. So here we go, let's go ahead and add in a new light source. Well, not a new, we will completely um, figure out our top-down light source right now before I go in and paint the juicy bits on the inside. Let's take another look at our fellows. I'm inclined to do a screen since this is a concept art piece. We don't really need to, no need to show off here. 
Exciting. Gobble that popcorn. Actually, that... Damn, that emoji's creepy as hell. <laughs> Is he gobbling his own brains? Ugh. That's some Hannibal Lecter shit right here. Huh? That totally sounds like something I'd want to paint, too. <laughs> That's wrong! Alright. Um... I'm putting down some value here, but what I want to do is quick take a moment here and think about this light source. So it's got to be, uh, so far as I've described it, it's kind of straight top down, but I kind of want to capture, we're going to need to do some, some changes here so that this lighting kind of works. And it's going to require that we probably center our creature a little bit more. So there's a little bit room, a little bit of room to breathe on the top and the bottom. We're gonna go back, we're gonna um, go back to our Sears photography background. Mush it into the sides so we don't have this sharp edge anymore. Quick and easy, boom, done. Let's go back to our screen. I'm gonna turn off the screen so I can color pick back that color I had, which is a dark blue gray color screen and then we'll get back to business here so thinking about this light source I want it to probably be a little bit on our side of the picture plane and mostly from from directly above so we're gonna see a little bit of the top of the cylinder there and this will be roughly our light source this is this is a, a, a ray style light source from above Juicy bits on the inside. Oh, for our popcorn friend there? Yes, that's horrifying. That's where the, the jalapenos go. Mmm, jalapeno popcorn. Gray voices, welcome. This is the thief stickle, yes. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna follow the uh, this new light source. Although it's we all we've done is just shift it and brought it brought it towards us just a touch. I'm doing this because I know that there's going to be right here at the at the edge of the form shadow of his little butt testicle head is going to be where all of the texture is really most visible. That's going to be the real juicy part for that sack and, and the brains inside that I want to show off. This this right here is going to be kind of the textural money, money shot or money spot maybe for this part of the head. And to get a good, nice band of it, where it's kind of creating, you know, this shape that follows the head, I need the light tilted just a little bit this way. If it's directly overhead, it's going to be more flat, and it'll feel more mushroomy. I'm not worrying too much about detail yet, it's just um, figuring out the lighting. Shabby gas, gas day, <laughs> welcome, thank you, glad you could join us. <laughs> oh no, I missed a redeemed insta poem, my bad. Let's see, juicy bits on the inside, is that what you want it to be about? Juicy bits on the inside? Oh, you're a monster. Testicle head is looking amazing. <laughs> Thank you. So, this will be our first Insta poem. Uh, the Insta poem is I need to come up with a poem on the spot, which means we put away our stylus for a moment and see what we can come up with. The theme you have chosen, Cypher, is juicy bits on the inside. All right, let's see. We will do it right here. Let's do this color. Ah, yeah. Okay. All right. So the theme. Oh man, sweat's coming on now. Juicy bits on the inside. All right. 
So what do you think? We have a lot of angles that we can take on this one. We can go pretty dirty, we could go pretty light. What I like to do is play against expectations. So the expectations here would probably be that we go pretty dirty. I look fabulous. Did I get a haircut? I did not. My hair is just mildly moist. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> I cut my hair last week, I think. I needed to get some off the sides and off the back. I got, I had, before uh, moving, sorry, before uh, coming up, I had been working on a pretty hardcore faux hawk. And I've just been chopping the sides off. But like in the last several months, it's just getting really bushy just in the back. So I had to, it's all gone. Okay, juicy bits on the inside. I want to say, let's go. Uh, I try to keep my Insta poems like maybe one stanza with an AABB or an ABAB. Um, so I'll just, I throw, I like to throw out just a phrase and see if the phrase kind of sticks somewhere. You want to name a layer? Fabulous. Fabulous will be our reference shot. Attack from Mars. One of the greatest pinball games ever made. Fabulous. Thank you for redeeming that layer. <laughs> we'll leave it up now. Actually, we can write a poem about our little guy right here. Open up the gray little man. Who's mostly known? No. Who's... I want... Let's see, we need... I'm going through like different, so when I'm thinking about the next level of stanzas, I think about different words, obviously, that I want to rhyme, and then it'll be like sentences for that. So we want to open up the great little man. Roses are red. Oh, don't mess me up now. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, DJ Ultra Tom. Thanks for the, the, uh, the second sub. Welcome. Glad you could join us, bud. So I'm a, I don't care as much about uh, the hard rhyme. What I like is making sure that the, that the last syllables work. So what we'll do is switch this. Open up the, the little gray man. And then brain pan works. So I got to figure out a sentence for brain pan. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Twitch finally seems to be working. That's awesome. Glad you could join. Lazy, welcome. Irina. Are we earlier today? Uh, I think maybe you guys have your daylight savings already. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But where I'm at, it is 1230. Did you guys have an hour switch recently? Let's uh, zoom in real quick. Wow, wow. No. Working in type in Photoshop is sometimes a nightmare. No, I'm missing freight, missing things. We went back in time. Yes, do you have the time switch at some point too? Yes, we do. We also have it. I think it is next week. Did you write a masterpiece of a poem? I missed it. You're right. 
<laughs> Roses are red, I have a testicle head. I like it. It flows very well. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's a good tattoo to have. I have to, I'll just, so how I do it is, so I'll write down a bunch of, a bunch of stuff real quick that kind of gets the rhyme. And then I have to do kind of like the polish phase, which involves reading it out loud. And then of course our final. So whatever I, I lead into this, whatever words lead into this will be our little <laughs> All right. We're good, Arena. I'm good. I got a coffee, I'm writing a poem. <laughs> I like meta commentary. If you're willing to commit to like full on scarification for a joke, you're doing it right. I think you're living your best life. I am writing a poem, yes. I had a, a Insta poem redeemed. So now I must finish a poem here on Twitch. <laughs> All right, let's read this. Let's open up the little gray man. He's not slimy, but grainy on the outside. Nope, this is wrong already. Uh, start the cut. At the swollen brain pan. So that actually works already. It's it's our it's our bee that needs some love. And tasty juicy bits on the inside. So if I if I polish this one first, it will dictate the, the first one. So we can do let's do an AABB. That's generally a lot easier and better sounding for a really a real quick one. <laughs> I do it all. All right, let's give this one a read. So now let's open up the little gray man, start the cut at the swollen brain pan, peel away skin on the outside to discover juicy bits on the inside. I see, I don't like that. So let's ignore the pull away skin on the outside and we're gonna have to have something else that rhymes with inside that is a little smoother. Give me ideas here, gang. What rhyme, what rhymes with inside? It's gotta be it's gotta be a syllable rhyme as well. I forget the word for that. <laughs> no, not all writers are good at poetry. In fact, I'm terrible at them. That's why this is kind of funny. <laughs> it is known as bad writing? I don't know. <laughs> Pin side. It's those ones, it's, oh, those are always tough. See, you can do a syllable rhyme that's that's got two syllables to it. It doesn't have to be two syllables to a single word. It can be um, one side, right? Or 
in on tide two it can be two words that come out to the same obviously these are these are weird <laughs> your weight and your testicles <laughs> Let's 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 leave it there and I'll and I'll be thinking about it while we're painting cuz that's true. We don't want to just sit and wait. I am a big proponent of using your brain passively in regard to ideation. So we have some stuff up there. Something will come to mind. We'll finish it before the end of the show. Twin side. That's pretty good actually. The twins hide. Yeah, I was thinking hide for sure. Hide is a good way to go. So I want to I want to think of a, a a word a lead in anyway, so that they sound good when spoken. You guys keep thinking. We'll get this. Then died. Abide. I was thinking abide, but I can't think of how it might be used here. <laughs> Cried. Oh my god. Oh my god. Please, please stop. Don't cut me. He cried. <laughs> Brain fried. That's a great one. I like this crowdsourcing method. Where are you guys when I'm writing my poems? You're all hired. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Peel away the skin and toss in some fries. Oh, there it is. I already like that. That's so much better. Why is it? <sighs> These uh, razors have a constant problem with static uh, buildup. <sighs> so then I get weird double clicks. <laughs> you accept other payment options? Can I pay you in bananas and salami? Got me a poem. In a poem writing mood? I accept cup. You take cupcakes? Perfect. Because that is something I produce with my body. Peel away, peel away the skin. <laughs> All right, let's read this one. Let's open up the little gray man, start the cut at the swollen brain pan, peel away skin, toss in some fries, take him and bake him. Oops, back him. That's the wrong word. Take him and bake him, consume the juicy bits on the inside. Still doesn't work in terms of uh, the, the, the syllables, but it's close. So much more refined. I like that one. <laughs> That's right. I produce cupcakes. It's my mutant ability. <laughs> Music. It's almost there. Like I said, it's all about that polish phase. Don't want to listen to these things. 
I'm gonna have to pollute the audio just a touch here and get a little sun out today. Let's listen to a little retro wave. I still need to find a way, I need to find some playlists that are all just royalty free um, playlists so you guys can actually listen to the music I'm listening to. That would be great. <laughs> Money is the, is the bullshit middleman between you and cupcakes. That is a fact. <laughs> We need to start the cupcake union union. Worker rights and cupcake freedoms. I'm gonna have to thin this hand out significantly. I let it get really soapy. Excuse me. Let's go back to our opaque layer and kinda Chill that out just a little bit. Now, what is happening here? Erase. Or is there something under you? Ah, there you are. I found you. Make it still readable when you flip the canvas. Oh, there's not enough points for me to do anagrams, man. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do I ever use pre precision mode with my Intuos? I don't even know what that is. So I think it's safe to say I do not. Is precision mode a something that's done in the settings? Or are you talking about something that has to do with uh, Photoshop specifically? It's a button. Oh, it's a button on your Intuos. I have a feeling, if, especially if it's a newer thing, it's something that's intended to be like a uh, precision mode on mice, which is something for gaming, and I don't know why they would think that that would be necessary for drawing, but what I imagine it is is simply a, a mode where the, where basically it's like up in Photoshop, they take uh, your, your sensitivity and then make the, the they, they don't increase the sensitivity. What they're going to do is um, change the level of sensitivity in, in relationship to all the different points on that map. So it's going to make the mapping probably more precise. So when you move, when you move at this rate normally, you're going to get this amount of movement on the stylus or on the, the cursor. And then with precision on, when you move this amount, it'll probably move like this much on the cursor. So it'll be it's. I don't think that that's going to be very useful for painting. That's something that's great if you're switching from using an assault rifle to a sniper in Warzone, but that's not going to be helpful for us. I would avoid it. That sounds like just gimmicky bullshit to me. You guys aren't minions already? <laughs> Excellent. Lazy is my minion. <laughs> Uh, like upping upping the DPI. Yes, that's that's pretty much exactly what it would be. Yeah, and I don't imagine many people are playing Warzone with a stylus. I mean, that's kind of an interesting idea. That would be a fun challenge to try and play a video game with a stylus <laughs> rather than a mouse. That would be insane. Oh my god. God, now I'm imagining it. That would be wow. All right. Uh, you guys didn't tell me I was doing repeat words here. Come on, you guys are terrible editors.
Okay, so these two words aren't working. <laughs> Your friend plays video games with the with the Intos? Are you serious? <laughs> Summer's guy, that's awesome. <laughs> Perfect. The pooper skin. <laughs> Better with a stylus than a mouse. That is fascinating. Does he does he use it in mouse mode, lazy? Like like when he drags across, is he able to drag across? Or is it specific to the screen? I mean, it's gotta be in mouse mode. It has to be. <laughs> I haven't seen the cat pooper scooper ad. Usually when I'm watching somebody on Twitch and the ads come on, I just turn it off. <laughs> I'm the worst. <laughs> Simple, some people use styluses because they can't use a mouse due to disability. That's awesome. Okay, wow. I, I should try it. Maybe I'd be better, because I'm pretty damn terrible. <laughs> Take him and bake him. Whatever that lead in has to be short and poppy. I do not want to rasterize my layers. <laughs> because I don't practice. This is practice though. This counts as practice. Come on. I'm painting monsters with giant testicle heads. I mean, this is basically what I do for a living, give or take. If it's not testicles, it's foreskins, you know? I'm just trying to shape these lights. We're gonna do it opaque on top. <laughs> the foreskins that marry. <laughs> Fanny Scene Art, welcome. Thank you. Glad you could join us. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> What's on your mind, Irina? Or is that oh Izzy and just like, just mom style disappointment in how awful I am? <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. That's Irina style moms. <laughs> I live for your disapproval, lady. <laughs> I, I know I earn it. <laughs> it's just that lost, it's my lost boy's way. I can, I can never be redeemed, but I'm adorable, so I get away with it. <laughs> oh, y'all are great. This is more parallel to my light source, so it's not gonna pick up as much light. I like the little pinkies I'm getting from going over the, the, the lines. So this is what I'm talking about with that artifacting that happens, is you just create um, more visual interest because you're mixing colors that uh, you hadn't planned by doing that with the line, the, uh, the line layer. I definitely want this webbing to be kind of weird and uncomfortable. Which I guess could really just be the motto of our show. <laughs> I 
Your son was shouting nipples after school. <laughs> <laughs> oh no i would be the worst i would positively reinforce all the wrong things with kids just because i would be laughing so much at the silly stuff they do and say <laughs> oh gray voices has got a point there that is very true totally acceptable in public Irina, have you got a new painting for us? <laughs> I don't know. Nobody knows. It is the mystery of the ages. Let us kill some of this line and some of this darkness. Still thinking about poem. It's on my mind. All right, now we're gonna do an opaque. Let's see, we're at wow, super midtone. So this is this is a really darkly keyed image. Yeah, let's go really high, and then we can kind of come back from there and see how we're looking. I want to make his um, his brain sack kind of shiny and transparent, so we'll have multiple layers of like materials between. Um, but we need to we need to accelerate the lighting here just a touch. Working now madly to finish by Saturday. Way too little time. Oh man. Well, hopefully you're painting with us right now. He's into maths and hates the art. Huh. Interesting. Hates art. Damn. That's brutal. But understandable. It is useless. But so much fun. <laughs> I need to think about the size of the folds that I want in here on the brain. I think I was originally going pretty large, but maybe something a little bit medium small might be better for toying with at that level.
Yeah, I'm still aiming for that kind of plasticky look. Keep missing conversations here, my goodness. <laughs> awesome. Grow that following. Gotta have slurp in the poem, okay. I mean, we're definitely talking about expanding stanzas, but I don't know about that. We'll see. We'll save, maybe we'll save slurp for the next one. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. You guys all should definitely be following each other and helping each other with your paintings. Are, is it another book cover, Irina? That that you're crunching on right now? Oh, a competition entry. Whoa, that's awesome. Are you is it for a uh, art book? What's what what are you going to win? It's a complex scene. A publisher in London. That's awesome. Whoa. Oh, that's really great. So you're already in. Death Pun, welcome. Glad you could join us. This is uh, a sort of fan art redesign. I, I don't ever really do straight fan art, but it's sort of a redesign of my uh, some creatures from one of my favorite pinball games. And thank you for the follow on IG. That's awesome. Painting is of an Indian traveler encountering an alive stone statue with a cruel smile. It's very handsome and made of black stone. Wow. Wow, that sounds really interesting. Like a really good material challenge, good compositional challenge. That's awesome. Death Punks, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that.
Oops. I keep trying to rasterize the, the type. Can't do that. Well, we don't need to... Let's say that's just the title then. Oh, god damn this fucking mouse. So annoying. Ugh. I need to get a new mouse. I'm so sick of this thing. And some fries, place them on foil, set over to foil. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> So a lot can go wrong. I don't, I think you'll be fine. Just be confident in, in the skills that you've got. I think, uh, I think you'll, you'll be surprised. It's gonna come out great. It's, it does sound cool. I agree with the uh, great voices there. Yeah, if, if you're willing to share uh, the work in progress and the final, I really hope that uh, you see, that, that we'll see it up on the Discord. That'd be great. Oh, you don't know if you can show the work in progress, okay. This is the content you're here for, blow. <laughs> so no, it's it's a laser one, but it's the the this the pickup sensor, the switch basically right there that's underneath that that um, that click, the left mouse click. It it has it gets like this weird. It builds up a static charge between the the, the contact points, and then it it will it will read every click as two or three clicks. And it's super annoying. Pisses me off so much. Do I still have a mouse with a ball in? Nope, not for years. <laughs> of course you can show it in Discord. Discord is the community for all of us. That's that's for you to to share and get critique and get help or or you know, just kick ass in general. Nope. Watch. Bah. Fuck. Watch. That did not work. Still got something. There's something percolating. Just gotta wait. <laughs> juicy morsels inside. I like juicy morsels. That's a pretty great. Morsels sounds much better than bits. Do I ever use a happy, colorful palette for painting monsters? Totally. I've actually painted some very colorful monsters. Um, I'd say there, there is kind of, there, there's definitely sort of like a, a color language that already exists for monsters in general. Um, and, and when you look at some of these classic, you know, I mean, these are, that's a color language that's quite, quite old. And when you're doing, you know, when you're doing monsters, especially like known monsters, it's, it's pretty common to, to end up with those same colors. But no, I've totally done like colorful monsters. I like playing up, playing with uh, uh, contrast of expectation for sure. So I don't always do, do just purple and green for monsters. It just happens to be the case for the last two paintings. 
Those are also, it's, it's a color combination I love, not gonna lie. But I do like to vary it out. Good examples of some more colorful monsters I've done would be to check out some of my recent magic cards. There's been some, some pretty crazy palettes with those lately. Which has been good fun. Good, good fun for all. So I'm noticing that, that the, the lumps, I'm making a bunch of lumps here, but they're not feeling ribbony and connected. So I need to kind of slow down a little bit and, and f kind of define where these connected sort of maze-like structures will live. I can't just have it just be kind of a cloudy, nonsensical mess. It's got to, it has to have that, follow that kind of idea of, of a brain. So I'm just erasing out uh, the, the paint that I've just done and I'm erasing out sort of just little, like a little tentacle shape type thing on two sides. And by doing it on the two sides, uh, the job is a little bit easier because I can just soften the top side and then it becomes a form shadow that ends and terminates at the beginning of another form shadow. So it's an easy way to uh, create an undulating form really quickly and easily without any effort. Not a lot of thought necessary. And you can do the same thing if I'm painting in the positive, right? Except now I use the form shadow on the bottom side of the positive instead of the top side of the negative. See? Easy peasy, gang. I'm just softening that shadow because it's too dark for the light side. All the values need to be unified. These, these parts that are just a little too dark, I gotta tint them to the light side slightly. <laughs> Happy medically concerning colors. Dan Rob, welcome. Glad you could join us. <laughs> We're having some time here, painting some testes and writing poems. Excuse me, have you ever seen those paintings that look like they're lit from a camera flash? They're pretty cool. Yes, I have seen them and I do love them. I've used that technique for a couple of concept paintings I've done in the past. Uh, they were, it was for a zombie game, I think. I, it was a while ago, but it's, it's challenging. You should try it out. It's challenging to kind of get all of the flat lit part on the surfaces that are actually where your light, where your eye is at too, so that all the perpendicularity to light is also perpendicular to your eye. To your eye. And it creates a really unusual effect. It's, it's, it feels almost unnatural to paint because we don't emit light from our eyes traditionally. I mean, there was that one time at the crossroads, but that's another story. Ermagerd, <laughs> welcome, glad you could join us. For the painting of the Eldritch Bucket Dude, did I end up remembering the artist I was referencing but forgot the name of? Yes, it was Ollie. It was something like, what was it? Oops. I think it was like R-E-K-T or R-E-R-Y-K Ollie on, uh, on YouTube. I wanna say it was something like that. I, and I believe the person's name is actually Olia. Great painter. Um, definitely not speed paints though. So, a little bit of, little uh, grain of salt with that one. You bought Watch Dogs Legion because of the cyberpunk? Oh, because cyberpunk was delayed? Oh no! How is it? Is it good? I, I played the first one 
through and I played a little bit of the second one, I got kind of bored of it. It's not Oleg, no. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up again. No problem. Let me see. Bear with me here, gang, while I do a quick search, sorry. These are really good videos to watch, though, because I think they they were very informative for from an analytical standpoint to see how, to just see a different way of painting and approaching light and, and the thinking about it. Mellow Edwards, welcome. You need the tech dystopia fix? Yeah, I feel ya. <laughs> Ubisoft opened many bottles of champagne after the announcement. Legion and Valhalla will see way more purchases. Oh yeah, because of the, the delay? Totally. In a monster with the with the lighting from a flash? We could do that next time. I mean it's we're still kind of painting some Halloween spooks, and I'll be do I, I love Halloween, so. I'm going to be probably doing a little bit of Halloween goodness for a while here. Uh, it is... I was close. It is Ray Cat Oli. This is the name to look up on... Uh, that's their channel. Um, very cool paintings. And, and the buildup is so slow and very like careful and textured. It, and it makes for a really nice uh, sort of airy feeling painting even though it's very dark and like and it's got that kind of rembrandt is it condensed darkness the, the value keys are super tight super tight i mean i think he they're maybe working with like i want to say 20 20 percent it's insane really cool stuff you think decentralizing the narrative and making london the main character was a really cool choice yeah, I, I haven't seen too much in it. I do know that the, that the conceit of the game is that you can basically play anybody that you've hacked, which is kind of cool. But I have a feeling that'll probably get mundane after a while because everybody will feel so much alike. That'll be the question is, are they able to make the characters individualistic enough that, that playing them feels different? Like you're getting an interesting narrative out of that. That's a challenge. I mean, what they're doing is not easy. Yeah, exactly. Does it does it feel scattered? Yeah. Ermagerd says super hacker man isn't as interesting as recruiting people with varied attributes and abilities. Yeah, I'm I'm inclined to agree. That's pretty cool. And and like I said, I saw a little bit of it on on YouTube when they were advertising for it. It looks interesting. But the the actual the core world of it, I I lost interest in like on the second one. But I remember, yeah, it had like the whole, my wife is dead, my children are dead. I'm out here fighting the good fight in a world. Yeah, it was, it was a little goofy, but I like you, I love cyberpunk. It's, it's one of my favorite, favorite genres. I'm not sure. I, I imagine cyberpunk in general is probably one of those things like Star Wars. Like once, you know, if, if you weren't there, it doesn't really have the same appeal. You know, like the, because of the technology that we have available now, things that that are that were so cool in cyberpunk are kind of mundane. I think that's why cyberpunk has been moving so much into the transhumanist territory, like the conversation of like, what is human, you know, your deus ex type tales, because deus ex originally was just kind of cyberpunk espionage, right? And, and just being a badass. And then as it evolved, the story was really about what what does it mean to be human and, and kind of expanding on genocide, racism, things like that. That people have different personalities, that's cool. Mm. 
Yeah, no problem, Grey Voices. They're mandatory, mandatory characters. Those are, I guarantee you the mandatory ones are the ones that are probably the coolest. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I was talking about, uh, Grey Voices. That it's not a speed paint, and I I, I find it highly unfortunate that uh, folks call it that. It's just that's not what it is, and it's and it can be very it can intimidate people that aren't that don't know the difference. They're networked socially. I have a feeling probably social networking is going to be a core aspect to that game. Ouch! <laughs> that was the first, the last, the, the last game you pre-ordered was uh, Watch Dogs. Damn. Uh, I think uh, Watch Dogs in general has m been more of that immersive sim kind of uh, approach. Oh shit, it's like Shadow of Mordor's Nemesis system? That's cool. London will remember that. <laughs> London likes that. Well, yeah, I might I might check it out. I to be to be totally frank, I haven't played an Ubisoft game in ages. I think the last one that I really put and dumped some loving time into was Black Flag. Was it not Black Flag? Uh, yeah, wasn't it called? Uh, I think it was called Black Flag. That was the fourth, the pirate one, uh, Assassin's Creed. Shit, I can't even remember the name of it. It's that long ago. That was before I got on the boat. Hmm. I remember the sailing mechanic was pretty fun. I really like the sailing mechanic in Sea of Thieves, too. It's not accurate, but it's very fun. All right. So I'm checking over here, looking at my uh, my navigator to see where it's sitting. <laughs> You've run a lot of people over. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Ubisoft forced me to do it. All right. Let's go. Let's get. Stop back into Cypher's poem. Let's see where we're sitting. tell we'll come back to that in a minute you can turn on permadeath so if one of your operatives eyes they're gone forever like XCOM oh my god that's the thing I hated the most about XCOM oh my god I've, I've bought that game two times now uh, the second one I think it was and I would get deep into it and get really invested and then I'd have one of my characters die after putting on putting in all those hours and I was like rage quit fuck you bah. sorry I hit the mic with my rage rage I have it a dark soul inside. So 
So your recruits get arrested or hospitalized and they're on a cooldown timer before you can use them again? Eh. How often, or is it something where you're like constantly switching between uh, identities? Like super fast? Don't have a lot of highly specialized missions. You don't have many highly specialized recruits, huh? I wonder if the recruits feel bad when you stop using them. You'd also like to say I was right. You said Cyberpunk wouldn't get delayed again, and you said it might. I <laughs> win this time. <laughs> no, I've just been doing video game development for a while. Um, it, it, in all likelihood, it'll be delayed again. Uh, the, they promised a lot. They promised a hell of a lot. And I know that... I mean, let's face it. I'll also say this. I'm going to predict this right now. No matter how great it is, people are still going to be disappointed. I think you get you get kind of a... As a when, once you're doing game development for a while, you kind of understand what goes into it a little bit better and can control your expectations much more because the you know the developers are usually not the marketing people they're usually not not even in the same meetings uh, sometimes they're not even in the same buildings and so the marketing people they want to sell stuff and that's good because selling stuff means you can make more stuff but the problem is, is that sometimes they'll they'll oversell something or they're they're not gamers themselves so they you know they 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 don't know what kind of experience they're trying that they're promising and uh it can get it can get pretty mixed up so yeah i th i have a feeling it will be a great game just like uh witcher was a great game even though i haven't finished it uh i know that it's it's really good and i enjoy it but uh, hype, hype these days is more poison than it is beneficial, in my opinion. Yeah, you're pre-selling, but it's the, it's the surprises. I think surprises are the things that really stick with people and kind of give them that that special feeling that 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 will put the game into their you know deeply seated into their psyche as something that was really great and inf influential for them. If you oversell things, uh, the only way, the only road from there is pretty much down. I mean, look at the games, look at the games that are super successful right now and and notice how many of them were just like, holy shit, this is out of nowhere and it's great. It's super fun. And and some of these games people are still playing like um, uh, Rocket League, Among Us. Uh, there's so many awesome titles inside i had no idea what to expect from that and it's one of my most favorite games of all time i've had so much fun playing rocket rocket league i played it in when i was in mexico at a, at a friend's house and, and put in some some hours on that uh i never got great at it but it was so much fun if they had come out promising oh this is gonna be the the biggest game changer no nah, man you can't do that. It's uh, it's kind of the Lovecraftian approach. That's how I think about it, anyway. Like you, if you, you can describe a monster, and the person that you're describing this to, your reader, will imagine something so much greater. Just the just the unknown of it is so much bigger than you could ever actually deliver doing the art of the creature. That. Uh, you're gonna, they're going to always feel a little bit let down by the end result. 
And this is true for hyping with games too, and in my opinion. This is all personal opinion, caveat, caveat. Home real quick. Let's open up the little gray man. Start the cut at his swollen brain pan. Peel away skin and toss in some fries. Place him on foil. Set oven to broil. The dark meat is yours, but I get the eyes. There you go. The juicy bits on the inside. That's a that's an an Izzy original right there. I can't do Vincent Price voice, unfortunately. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't. I'm trying. Like I, I would recognize his voice instantly, but I can't conjure it. You know, I can't take that sound and then make myself do it. If I could hear it, then maybe I could mimic it after a little while. But that's not high on the high on my uh, um, accent knowledge. I just remember he sounds really spoopy. You don't believe me? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'll have to listen. I'll have to listen to more Vincent Price. I know that his voice is not gravelly at all. It's 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 more like a <clears throat> it's it's almost got kind of a vaudevillian villain sound to it. I know that much. It is known. <laughs> okay, where is that dark coming from? Is that just from the purple underpaint? Mr. Creep hosting. Thank you so much, Mr. Creep. Super appreciate that. I got to figure out how to do that hosting myself. I. I am so Twitch illiterate, it's kind of embarrassing. Where is that damn dark layer coming from? Ooh, you're making me mad! You're making me so mad! I don't know. I don't know where it's coming from, so... You know what? I'm just gonna... <laughs> I'm just gonna paint the light over it. Ooh. That is awful. All right. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to soften that transition out a little bit because let's uh lock the layer. In this way, what I'm doing here is I'm directing the light source because it can't be bright all the way to the edge. Even if it's just a slim band of darker value, it will help indicate that the light source is not abo directly above him. It is more on our side, just a touch. More on our side of the picture, picture plane. You know, actually, I think that's something I've never actually explained in Twitch. So let's do that real quick. So when I'm talking about picture plane and where the light sources are, or even where objects are on picture plane, what I'm thinking about is for you to imagine, <clears throat> for you to imagine a, a, a pane of glass, right? And the pane of glass in, in my, how I'm describing things would be sort of if our, if our guy is sitting here, right? And he's got his little legs. The pane of glass is basically where our camera is at it's it's where the shot is happening from so to me when when you flatten all of this stuff so that it is now a two-dimensional thing right this is the picture plane so if i'm describing something that's in z depth so if it's the light overhead but if the light's directly over his head it's inside the picture plane right if it's behind him it's behind the figure right 
if the light source is in front of the figure uh, and between the picture plane, I'd say between picture plane and in front of the figure. But one of the easiest ways to think about it is coming from our side of the picture plane for that sort of light source. So the light source is coming from that direction. So that's what I mean when I say picture plane. I, I'm pretty sure I have not mentioned that particular thing yet here on Twitch. I have talked about it in um, on the Patreon, I believe. It's all mushing together. It's the drugs, I tell you. Sweet, sweet drugs. Mm -hmm. Stay in drugs, don't do school. Save, always be saving. Save, 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 save. <laughs> oh, Izzy. <laughs> okay, I've decided that we need a recording of you disappointedly saying, oh, Izzy, and we're gonna make that, <laughs> we're gonna make that an audio thing, an audio cue that you guys can do. <laughs> the filth that comes out of this boy's mouth, I tell you. He's just the waste. One of the things I, I like doing with this with this lighting, I haven't really talked to, too much about the uh, the color aspects of this. So um, I've added these these lights, right? <clears throat> I painted my midtones or my my dark midtones where the Terminator is at in this green. Oops, and then I used a cool sort of fill light to kind of round out and top off the top of the head a little bit, and then I went for a desaturated light source. So what this does by creating a desaturated light source and using desaturated color for my light is it makes the saturated parts look more saturated in respect. And the, the bits where I'm letting that underpainting come through show a variety of colors. And so with no extra effort on my part, I'm creating a visual interest and color noise. And the color noise is, is one of those things that kind of just makes your makes your viewer want to sit and pay attention to whatever it is they're looking at. It gives it, it gives your paintings a quality of like liveliness because your, your eyes, when they, when they see color and the way your brain processes a variety of color, those color relationships that are right next to each other that are vibrant or maybe a little bit about out of place create a vibration in your head that it's, it's totally unconscious to you, but it's an attractive thing. And it, it, it draws you into that image. So um, painters that I think have really good command of color will, will play a little bit with your brain's expectations for where those colors belong and how they behave. And, it, and it's, it just draws you in deeper. It gives you pause as you're looking at this thing because it has a, a bit of a feeling of life. There's a little bit more in the skin. And it's a technique I picked up actually not from traditional painting, well, it's one that I, I learned but didn't understand in traditional painting. But where I really got it was in Jordu uh, Shell's class where he was teaching maquette. Uh, I took a maquette sculpting class with him and he showed a, a painting demo. We didn't paint our own maquettes, but he did a painting demo. And in it, he showed how he built up form and how he would just scribble with an airbrush and scribble these different colors. So it, was, it looked like this weird potpourri muffin thing and you weren't really sure. But then as he started glazing over and over with other colors, what's happening is the light is going through each layer of color and bouncing around and coming back up and picking up different colors. And from a distance, I mean, even a, a very mild distance, that gives the illusion of like a living skin. And it was really effective with skin, like all these modeling. And it at first I thought it was that he was painting actual uh, like veins and things like that, but he wasn't doing so much of that. He did do it later on, but the buildup, that initial buildup was just to create color vibration, which gives it, it gives a slight, very subtle hint of movement. And it's, it's un completely unconscious, but it will help make your paintings. It will help breathe a little bit of life into your paintings. That is what I mean to say. <laughs> Staying drugs. Don't do school. School is for suckers. No, don't listen to that. That's not true. But drugs are great. You can totally trust me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're going to have 20,000 Z-Bolts worth of poems soon? Oh, no. Are you making like an, uh, an Izzy Z-Bolt poem collection? Is that the plan here? <laughs> so what do, you think of, what do you think of my first poem there? Did that work for you? Are you pleased? Are you not entertained? <laughs> we did a poem live. I mean, it was very slow and laborious. But that's how I do them. If I'm able to really concentrate on it, I can do it much faster, but it requires me to kind of just sit there for 10 minutes going, hmm, and then editing and cutting, editing, cutting, uh, rewording, and it's not so fun to watch. But it definitely goes a little faster. Wow, it is beautiful outside today. The sun really came out. DJ Ultra Tom, I hope you get to go outside in the sun a little bit. It's very pleasing, so incredibly entertained. <laughs> no! The wheel of art direction, you monster! Oh, god damn it! All right, it is time to spin the wheel. Oh, let's hope we never meet. Oh, my goodness, my friend. <laughs> oh, here we go, here we go. Pesky art directors. So yes, the art director has come into the room, leaned over, done one of these over our, our chair, looking at the painting, and now has an opinion. So let's open up our wheel of art direction. Let's hopefully, hopefully it works. Badoosh. Ha! Look at that. Right there, production value. Pesky art directors indeed. <laughs> the wheel, two men enter, one man leave. Just to get the mail when it shows up. Well, enjoy that little bit, Tom. <laughs> wheel, wheel, wheel. All right, here we go. I gotta remember how to do this. We've done it only a couple of times. So for those of you that are new and have not seen the Wheel of Art Direction, the Wheel of Art Direction is intended to kind of be the monkey wrench in any painting I'm doing uh, here on Twitch. I have put together a collection of different art directions that I personally have received combined with a bunch from the pocket art protect protect art director art protector that's a Freudian slip if ever there was one uh, and between those two things these are actual these are these are not uncommon things you might hear or experience so I wanted to make a realistic kind of thing to throw in there so that you can see what it's like and how you might be able to react and how you might be able to alter your work in order to satisfy possibly a grumpy weird or disconnected art director so without further ado let us uh, spin the wheel Story request. Oh no, this is not at all an art direction, but it is definitely a, a a monkey wrench in the painting. So you may may pick a topic, and I will try to remember some kind of story or, ha or have some kind of story for you in regard to that. But I can paint at the same time, so that's good. So you can think about that for a bit, and we will go back to our. Oosh. Nice transition there. I'm I'm looking at uh, uh, I've been on Fiverr recently, and I'm looking at, at actually purchasing some proper transitions that will be branded for the site. Because again, production value, right? It's got to be done. It's got to be done. But uh, it's it's interesting shopping around because I don't know I don't even know what to look for for that kind of thing. So I'll be keeping an eye. <laughs> Mister Incredibad, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome. Glad you could join us. How dare you teach us things through silliness. That is, that's kind of my way. <laughs> What's new, Dan Rob? The, the story bit? I will tell a story while I paint about something that, I don't know, if we, it, let's come up with a topic. 
I'm sure I have some kind of I got I got stories for days. <laughs> Thanks very much. I appreciate that. We could also, if you like, if you would like, uh, since Dan Rob, we have not we haven't dropped on the request a story yet. If you want to inject some kind of story, and you, we can use that as an art direction thing too, that would also be a great learning moment. So your choice, dealer's choice. See how here where I'm I'm color picking, and I'm painting into the dark, but I'm color I'm painting in with the local color there that I, that I've selected. Those parts are losing that underpainting, and as a result, look a little bit more dead. So one of the things that we can do to counter that is to mix in other colors. We can do any color too. Um, it's better if it's a color that you have in your painting. We have a lot of purples and pinks in here already, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some pinks and blend the pinks into the midtones of that key. So this is the light key side. We're mixing midtones into the dark, er, sorry, we're mixing this pink into the midtones and the darks of the light side. So that's all what I what I was adding from was two darks. I got a color pick and pick out something a little bit in between. Let's see. Something like this alien has always dreamed of being a hairdresser. That would be a sad sad tale. Um, this alien has no hair and it would be a heartbreaking tale of woe. And, and jealousy and envy, breaking friendships, and then growth and discovery. You were beautiful all along, Mr. Alien Man. You think the boating stories are always cool? Or for the image, maybe adding some hint of where this creature came from? It's your call, you're the art director. Where'd the creature come from? Okay, so the, we know that this is a redesign of the aliens from Attack from Mars. So we know that it's from Mars, but we can get a little bit more uh, specific. Maybe this creature, the reason he looks so different is that he is an adopted alien. So he's actually from, let's say, What's the next planet from after Mars? <laughs> my astronomy is as good as my geology. Help me out here, gang. So he's adopted. He's real weird and, and he's... I think that that's good because that lends to kind of his little pose here. He's not muscular. He's kind of wimpy. So he, he doesn't feel like he belongs. He's from Earth. Oh, dark. I love it. So then he is a... He's a modified, a genetically modified alien after they have captured a, an alien specimen. And then they sent him back to infiltrate on Mars. But he's so weird and lumpy that he's not welcome there. <laughs> no matter what, I'm going to make it a tragedy and sad. That's what I do. <laughs> That's some goofy shit. Let's add in some... Yeah, actually, that's good. Gonna give it that baby poop. Yellow. And I want to put this in place in a variety of places in order to kind of add to that vibrant uh, vibration I'm after in terms of the color. Whenever you do, whenever you introduce a new color like that, it will always stand out at first um, because you got to mix it in properly, and then you have to in introduce it elsewhere in your painting. You can't just leave it in the one spot. Venus is the next, right? Earth is on the other is on one side. Jupiter. Oh, so Jupiter is the next one. Venus is after Jupiter. Wait. Oh, you guys are confusing the hell out of me now. <laughs> 
There was a sequel, Revenge from Mars. This could be from an un unmade sequel to that. How is that sequel, Tom? Is that good? I've never played that one. I've never even seen it. Two, it was one of the two Pinball 2000 games that got made. That was a different studio, right? Or a studio. That was a different maker. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter. Okay, so Venus is on the other side of Earth. Wait, no. That's not right. What? Is it? I'm so confused. <laughs> I've totally lost it. Pluto is a planet. I agree. We will we will be the double dragons on that fight. <laughs> Pluto is a planet, right? I don't believe it. I don't trust you guys no more. Not after that last time. <laughs> oh my god. Can't trust you no more after that job in Belarus. One of the ones with the pepper ghost effect screens. So the targets move and there's crazy visuals. Really? Man, we gotta find that one. I don't know where that, I, I've never seen it. I wonder if there's one over, over here somewhere. Ernest is the first planet. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I, that's amazing. The Streamlabs wanted to block uncultured swine. That's weird. <laughs> You decadent Philistines. Pinball 2000 was a line that Williams started as a last grasp to try to keep pinball relevant against the current arcade machines. They did Revenge from Mars and the Phantom Menace. Complex but fun once you get the hang of them. Damn. That's so sad. Saying of which, I'm waiting on my first paycheck and, and uh, I'm gonna call up the, uh, the local barcades and see about one of those rentals. I've been craving actual pinball so much. There was one at ground control? I never saw it there. Really? Oh yeah, there's a whole... I, I like pinball, but I'm not even close to the, the level of the subculture. I'm not even that good at it, I just like it. Like art, yeah. <laughs> Disco Elysium features pinball. You can't play them, but there's commentary on them. <laughs> no, pl please feel free to pedal it. It's it's an awesome looking game. I I have yet to play it, but it's it's been in my stream list for ages. The art is incredible, and I and the story sounds so good. 
Now, games, games like that and, and, you know, great programs and things like that, they need, uh, they need word of mouth. It's the best way. Especially when you consider how drowned out everything gets with media these days. So I want to be careful not to take the, the lit part too far beyond uh, the core shadow here. And th the reason I'm actually taking it down into the core shadow is because what I'm painting right now is actually the interior brain. I'm going to be painting layers on top of this that will make it appear like that there's translucent membranes over the brain itself. And in order to kind of sell that effect, one of the things you can do one of the most effective things, I think, is to light the underlying structures in a slightly offset way so that it accentuates the difference in where the light is falling on the outer membrane surface. It's, it, it's one of those things that takes a little bit of observation, but, but it's also going to be practicing and trying it out. And I've done this kind of effect a few times now with paintings, and I, I know that it does work. Now let's grab a different color here. Izzy, what are my thoughts on Cyberpunk? Which, the Cyberpunk being delayed? Uh, I knew that it was def- I definitely knew it was gonna get delayed. And it will probably get delayed again. Um, the flack is unfair. Uh, I know that- I know that a lot of people will make, um, early purchases based on a promise of a release date. I don't think that's a great idea. I think it's good because it means that the developers will get cash in the meantime so that they can continue working on the project. But as, as a purchaser, um, it's you got to take the good with the bad. The, the fact that they're delaying it is directly the result of them wanting to make it as good as they can. Um, delays don't happen because they're they just want to hold out and keep your money. It's, it's not at all the case. Uh, so studios like that, really what they're trying to do is they, they, they are working so hard to not disappoint the fans. And to, to choose to delay is not, that is not a small decision. They will sit and think about that very seriously. I mean, it's, they know that it can, if, they know that it can mess up sales, not just from, from flack, but what happens is when you promise things, so the way marketing works, when you make a, when you choose a release date for something, they actually have uh, algorithms and formulas, the marketing people do, that are, that are all set to specific timelines. So X number of months uh, or X number of years before you're gonna, you're gonna announce the game and say, this is what we're planning to do. X number of months after that, you do specific things in order to get people interested in it and, and maintain interest. And what you do is you cultivate this wave of hype. And that's what marketing is all about, on, especially in games. But in general, this is, this is the essence of the marketing, is to, is to make sure that the hype, the hype train is continuing to run and you're not losing sales. So it's all about this timing thing. And if you miss release dates, they have already set up the timing and broken down when they're going to release this, when they're going to announce that, Ke that uh, Keanu Reeves is in it, when they're going to announce uh, that you can do this or these guns or whatever are available, or that the, the game has actually three primary storylines. Like those are all released on time. They're all time release for a purpose to get to gain maximum chance of selling the game to a potential buyer. So by delaying, they know they're screwing themselves, and it's. 
they know that they're going to be taking a hit in sales. So the fact that they're doing it means they're really doing it for the fans. And that's, I think it's really harsh to, to come down on a studio like that that is, that is trying to do something and make sure that it is up to the quality that they know that you expect and that they expect from themselves. And the fan, just fan-based communities in general these days has become such a toxic environment and so demanding and so not understanding of what goes into making the products that they love. It's, it can be really frustrating um, when you're on the development side. So I totally feel for those guys. And then, you know, you throw in crunch and, and overtime and all the extra work that they're doing to try to mitigate this delay. Oh my God. They're in, they're in a really tough spot right now. So if you can support them, you know, don't, don't cancel your purchase, just support them. Uh, tell your friends, if, if you've got friends that are really bitching about this, try and tell them what I just told you and explain to them the reality of, of the development process because it's, it's very complex. There's a lot of thought and, and a lot of um, effort that goes into it. Overworking the devs is never good. I totally agree. <clears throat> yeah. No, you're, you're totally right. It, it's worth it to have the delays so that the devs can have quality of life and so that you're going to be assured a good experience with the game that you spent all this money on. Because it's a lot of money, too. I get that. I'm sure most, most of the devs are fine with it as it's a passion project. Uh, I don't know. I, I really... I would like more devs to fight for their time and their their mental and emotional well-being over the concept of a passion project i feel like the whole passion project thing is an easy way to really exploit and manipulate creatives and yeah you can be aware of of the fact that you're going to crunch but there shouldn't be a crunch if it's run if it's run smoothly if the consumers are understanding if the money is being properly spent on the right amount of people involved then, sure. You do think they should stop making promises? Yeah. <clears throat> I think that uh, it's, you can't, like I said, with the, with, the, with the release dates thing, you do have to kind of promise a release date, but, but to, to do really, really big promises on what the experience will be is probably a bit dangerous, I think. Because then you're not, you're not just fighting the date, you're fighting expectation. All right, so let's do a quick... Um, I think let's do a quick uh, uh, accent value pass just to figure out what my darkest darks might be in this area. Okay, that's my darkest dark, I think, in the painting, yeah. And that's about 20%, uh, 18%. Let's drop it down. And on this new layer, we're gonna do some accent values just to carve out forms. Oops. Okay, yeah, that's the one I wanna know. I might be going too dark too fast here, but that's all right. Um, I can always go back or erase it, r erase it back down. I just want to see how it feels right now. So we're just testing. And by softening it with a uh, a smudge brush that's that's hiding you know how dark that is so I got to remind myself I got to I can't uh, get distracted and forget that that value is so significantly different this is probably the only place that this value will really live is here in the mouth where we have not just ambient occlusion but full occlusion
Yeah, that's the darkest we'll go. Let's ease back on this one a little bit. Just by erasing. And now we'll use that color for a new ambient occlusion color. <clears throat> Oop, I missed some stuff. They already printed a bunch of marketing material, and that's not a small decision, yeah. Anthem should have been delayed. You ended up never playing it because it was all buggy, yeah. Makes you worried about the quality of the game in its current iteration. Are you talking about Anthem, or are you talking about uh, Cyberpunk? Yeah, having, having crunched, uh, I am totally sympathetic to devs on that one. Uh, the, the expectations are just through the roof. Software workers get a quality of life. <laughs> oh, Tom, they should. They should. The fact that that the fact that that's like a joke, like that's that's awful to me. I really wish I really wish uh, that we that our specific plights were a little bit more understood. But honestly, because it is because it is entertainment, because it is creative, uh, there's there's not a lot of sympathy. People don't really get it. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Incredivad, really enjoying the convo. Thanks for sharing industry insights. Man, absolutely. That's why we're here. So <clears throat> if you ever have questions, lean in. Uh, I can share experience, wisdom, whatever. Six hours, big proponent of six hour days. I think, honestly, I think six, four, four to six hours is plenty. A lot of, a, a lot of what happens, I, I you know, having hired people and having having been like in leadership positions at different studios, productivity, the amount of time that's really devoted to true 100% productivity per day is like four to six hours. Like beyond that, it's just busy work or goofing around, talking, it's meetings, loads of meetings. I think, it, and, and the other part is requiring that everybody meet at the same time. I think, I think the whole remote office thing that's happening right now is going to be, it, it is probably one of the best experiments in how productivity works in humans. And, and it's happening right now, right before our eyes, which is so exciting because you're not going to have this excuse anymore for, oh, we need 40 hours to crush the life out of you. We really don't. Most people I'm sure are finding if they're working from home right now, that they're able to get most of their work done in a much shorter amount of time. And the only time they need to really stretch themselves is when there's a greater amount of work per per whatever that day was. Yeah, hire more people. Absolutely hire more people. Yeah, gray voices definitely, I agree. It is, uh, it's an error in management and planning. Um, it's an error in over, over promising. One of the things that happens the most with games and, and I think this happens probably more in games than any other creative field is, is something that we call bloat. It's where when you're planning out the game, uh, you have these set ideas. And then as you're making the game, people continue to come up with more ideas. They don't, they don't just put the kibosh on it and say, okay, we're done with new ideas. Usually, and especially with the bigger budget companies that have bigger, um, bigger games, like big sexy games, like CD Projekt Red in this, ca in this case, they've already delivered on a game that promised and gave, it, it, they've already delivered on a game that promised a lot. And they've already been through that experience of having made, uh, you know, the built the world, they built out all of these systems, and it was a, a huge success, I think. And so now they're doing, they're doing that but with a different world. So then as you're building it, you're like, okay, well, here's some new ideas. And as you build the world, new ideas tend to generate. And that bloat can increase the amount of time significantly. Even little things like, oh, uh, there's this arcade in the one level. Wouldn't it be cool if we added a couple of games to the arcade for the players to play? Sounds awesome. We're also talking about three months of work, like boom, tacked on right there. So that, and that kind of stuff happens all the time. It's brutal comes down to <laughs> that's fucking harsh <laughs> you're passionate about your work but by the fourth or fifth day of crunch the project can go fuck itself honestly yeah i agree i've slept under my desk only a couple of times but i've had plenty plenty of crunch 
where it was, you know, 16 to 20 hour days. I did that plenty at Sony. And uh, it's one of the things I promised myself I would never do again. So even now, even though I'm working on a new, at a new studio, if it comes to crunch time and they start telling me that, I at this point in, in my career and being an old grizzled dog like I am now, if they tell me I'm going to have to crunch, I'll tell them, look, you paid for this many hours. That's what you get. Because as an, as an employee, you got to remember this. What you're trading for money is, is little chunks of your life. So if they're getting more chunks of your life than for what they promised to pay you, this is a terrible deal. It's a terrible deal because you don't get those chunks back. That's, that is not a, a, a rebuildable resource in any respect. So you should put your time above all other things, always. Passionate, uh, uh, we read that one. Thanks, Izzy, I'm writing a paper on a project management right now. You think you can get a few points on managing expectations of this conversation? Great. Actually, if you wanna share your paper when you're done, I I'm sure there are some folks around here, myself included, that might wanna check it out. Totally agree. Scope creep, yeah, feature creep. Kind of like what happened to No Man's Sky. Low fat, welcome, thank you. Yeah, uh, you're right. That's what happened with No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is also an example of probably opening things up to fans at an early stage and then accepting feedback. And so they got a lot of feedback, which kind of helped direct the game and then also caused feature creep. So it's that was a combination of things. That was, that was definitely a, a feature creep guarantee yeah dj tom uh, feature creep scope creep i don't know if it's a reputable source but the one dev that surfaced talking about this said they dicked around in pre-production for years and then crunch inevitably inevitably happens my experience has been that yeah you can have there's two there's basically two different types of ways that this kind of crunch does happen and it, it can be just fooling around in pre-production for a really long time and then the other part is the the scope creep or feature creep and sometimes in the worst case scenario, you'll get both. I've been in studios and I've been on projects where it was one, I've been in, in pro on projects that where it was the other, and I've also been on projects where it was both. And let me tell you, it is a nightmare to have to be responsible for, for that kind of creep. And what happens in a lot of studios, because they know that this is going to be a monster morale hit. That's one of the things that they have to manage. When you're, when you're managing a big group of people, you have to think about things like morale. So if you have a big group of people and they're all pissed off and grumpy because they're having to work, you know, 16 hour days and they're not getting to spend time with their family, uh, they're going to be mad. Morale's going to drop. People are going to start leaving. And once people start leaving, there's sort of a shifting point. So it's, it's a really, really dangerous thing. And uh, man, it, uh, managing that kind of thing at that point, it, I can't even imagine it. It's so frustrating. So one of the things that I've done now with the studio I'm with, for instance, currently is I wanted to make decisions right away instead of uh, so if I'm going to make a mistake my mistake will be feature creep in the second part it will not be endless pre-production because I want to make something get started make my mistakes early make them fast and then commit to stuff so that we know where we're going as quickly as possible and then if feature creep happens that's on me like that's for that's that's for us allowing new ideas to generate when I really think that when it comes to Dave, Dame, Dame give, game dev, <laughs> you're gonna wanna try to narrow that scope as fast as possible and then make sure that anything, make sure that, that, that the parameters that you establish with that narrowed scope dictate any of the changes that happen in the future so that it's all, it all remains very tight and it's all a, a, a cohesive structure that doesn't have hernias of ideas that per burst out of one in one direction or another. You want to keep it completely encased and control that urge to, you know, burst out a hernia idea. Isn't this situation most games? Industry is in a bad place. If shitty is the normal, then sure, it's a situation of most games. Yeah, I mean... You also think devs should be rewarded for their crunch. Yeah, and they should be rewarded in things more than like chicken dinner. <laughs> I think the Fortnite devs had a crazy crunch for months and it sucked, but they also got a huge bonuses. Yeah, I have heard that. Um, massive, massive bonuses is probably the best way to deal with that, but it's way better. Like I said, if you've got a choice, that's your time. That's your time. That's time with your family. That's time doing the things you really love. Isn't it a bit like getting payouts because you got cancer while working? 
Yeah. <laughs> Mandatory overtime. You just got vo voluntold to do this. The job description is flexible, so your duties will also change. Well, what bothers me the most is when they do this stuff salaried. So when you're salaried, they basically will just tack on hours. That wasn't in the contract. They're breaking contract. That's messed up. So, I mean, I remember I did the math when I was doing, uh, when I was salaried at a couple of different studios. And after crunching, that salary came down to like just slightly above minimum wage. And they're, you know, they're making the same amount of money on this. And that's, so that's the problem with crunch is they're taking the, they're taking the ex extra expense of making this game and they're pulling it from their employees. They're not pulling it by, they're not pulling it from the purchasers by actually increasing the price like they should. And they're not pulling it from the shareholders because the shareholders still got to make their bottom line and their bottom line is ever increasing. So capitalism, <laughs> how much money are you willing to sacrifice for money? Exactly. Yeah, the peer pressure thing. I wanted to talk about that too. So one of the things that happens is you end up if like one of the studios that I was at, they would make a uh, concept art crunch, even though crunch tends to happen at the end. So concept art, we worked our asses off at the beginning in pre-production before the game ever took off. That's when we put in all of our heavy, heavy hours. That's when we're doing the heavy lifting is in the beginning. And then we maintain in the middle, but usually at the end, that's when we get to kind of ease off. In the beginning, no one else is doing anything. They come in, they basically get a free paycheck. Like they get, well, that's, I'm exaggerating. But they, you know, they're not actively making a game. They're usually doing like some, they're doing some um, um, testing. They're building prototypes. They're doing other things that are a little bit more chill. We're really, really working in the beginning. And then this studio expected us to come in at the end and help out with crunch. So on a few days, my team would just sit there we would sit there for the entirety of crunch. You know, they would they would make us play test the game and things like that. And it's like this is not this is an unreasonable expectation. So, we did have talks with them about it and they did finally relent and let us out a little bit earlier, but we still had to stay later than we should have. Since work is dependent on every department. Oh, I already read that one. I don't think C CDPR has to worry about schedules right now. You just work all the time. Yeah. Oh, totally, Mr. Incredibad. That's that's my thinking is is fail fail it really quick. Get all of your failure done as fast as possible so that it'll direct where you want to go. Greatest lessons on capitalistic society in general. Yeah. You're in your third night of crunching on work, so you're really touchy when talking about crunch. I feel you. One hundred percent. I feel you. It's uh it's an a completely avoidable and terrible tactic, I think, to to take out the excess um, loss of profit on the employees. But that's the way our system works. It's just, that's just integral. That means the system is working. If that if it comes out of the labor and off the backs of the employees, that's the way this is intended to go. And that's so messed up to me. <laughs> cupcakes. Always take the cupcakes. <laughs> so because the because employers and the culture is so built around the idea of self-sacrifice for the passion. Uh, a lot of people don't even think that it's a possibility to go in and say, hey, you know what? I've been crunching this long. Um, I'm, I'm going home. I'm done. Uh, I'll be back after I've had a good night's rest or a couple of good night's rest. Uh, that we, we just think that we can't do that. But the fact is, is once you're already locked in there, to lose you at that point, 
see, they're they're making it seem like uh, this is this is the most precarious position you can be in. Mm -mm. That's right at that moment in the, in that crunch. Like for for example, obviously, it's, I, I don't expect anybody to do such a thing. But at CD Projekt Red right now, now is where they are at their most tenable. Like the that's when an employee has a great deal of power. And when you're crunching, certainly you don't need to be rude. You don't need to be um, obnoxious. You just need to explain your case and say, hey, you know, I've been doing this for this long. I understand this is an expectation of the culture, but you in this contract, hold up the contract, agreed to pay me this much for this many hours of my day. So I'm going home. I will be here tomorrow unless you would like to dismiss me. You'll notice that crunch is not, it, I don't think it's ever really included in, in a contract. Um, there's a lot of veterans and I, and I totally get it. There's a lot of veterans that would say, just do it. You know, it's just part of the job. But I think that that's one of those things that will never change unless you stand up and, and do something about it. You'll be, the, you'll be the veteran. If you keep it up, you'll be the veteran telling some young kid, oh, you know, this is just how it is. It's like that same mentality that comes with uh, people that have, you know, managed to finish paying off their student loans. And they're like, well, what? Forgive student loans? Free college? That's ridiculous. I did it. I survived. It's like, well, buddy. Just because you did it that way doesn't mean it's the best way. It doesn't mean that because it happened to you, it was good or fair. I'm digging out the, the darkest darks right now on the different surfaces, trying to find little accent points, and then I'll render from there so that they're not just, so it won't look like he's Swiss cheese. So let's grab a slightly softer brush, not so hard edge, and then we can start tracing these out. Ah, oh, lazy, you gotta take off? No worries, my man, get some rest. Thanks for hanging out. I missed a bunch of conversation here. 27 viewers, way to go. Yay, hey, 27, nice. Thanks for watching, y'all. Both is for the upper percent and not the non. You down here in the trenches, yeah. With our cupcakes, our cupcakes of sadness. The proletariat cupcake. Health, health is more important than money and money equals health. Yeah, yeah, we got a major problem here. Yeah. It's especially bad in the States. Passion fades fast after the 12th hour, first day of crunch. It's not a passion issue at all. Yeah, it's you're right. It's a, It becomes then just like this endurance slog, and it's horrible. <clears throat> Do share when you're done. We might not read it, but we'll comment on it very shallowly. So cruel. I do think this is a pretty good self-portrait. I'm glad Lazy liked it. <laughs> paradigm shifts take a catalyst i agree i think really what's gonna what's gonna happen is it's, we just have to educate enough people on the power that they really have and sort of how unfair this system has been for, and for so very long like we've just gotten used to the smell of the rendering plant and 
so we don't notice it anymore. It's kind of terrible. Think about it. I think I want to curl these back a little bit more. <clears throat> Maybe we'll see something different post Rona. Probably, I, like I said, with the with the statistics and everybody having experienced remote working now, I, I guarantee you the workplace will have to change. There's no way anybody can go back after this and go, oh, we should we should go back to cubicles and, and living how we were living. I mean, that's it's awful. Seizing the means of production would be a start. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm. I don't know. I don't know about seizing because I, I wouldn't go that far. And obviously, that's never going to happen in the states, uh, just by virtue of all the names that you will be called. But um, I think learning to accept the idea of worker representation in the workplace is probably the best place to start. Seizing, mm, they're not going to go for that. That's going to be just. People will never understand it. They'll just see that as you know, going full communist. But if you if you show them a little bit of, of the socialist direction where you have uh, worker representation, worker rights, things like that, I think that would be of huge benefit. And I don't think that would be a, a, a gigantic change either. It's just shifting the idea that not only do we need to constantly, not only do we need to be profiting, that profit has to constantly be improving. That That concept alone is possibly the most poisonous idea I can imagine for a company. The idea that you need to constantly be profiting more than you were profiting yesterday. It's not enough to be making a ton of money. You're already making a profit. A, a profit is you're making more than you spent to do the thing, right? It's your net gains after uh, you know expenses and all of the things involved. That's your profit. Why does your profit have to constantly balloon? If, if you're making, if you're already making millions and or billions, do you really need to be making trillions? It, at what point is that even useful anymore? And it, it, it honestly, it wouldn't even be that big a deal if it didn't come at the cost of your employees. If the, the ability to do that didn't involve taking advantage of your customers and your employees, then fine, go for it. But the problem is, right? Uh, Mr. Incredibad, do I have a stream schedule? I do. I stream on Mondays and Tuesdays at 3 p.m. and Thursdays at 12 uh, noon Pacific Standard Time. Those will probably be shifting uh, in the coming month or two as I alter at least one of the days of my schedule to be more UK Eastern European friendly. But that's the current schedule. One can dream, yeah. We always had the power, we just didn't know. That's absolutely true. We have bought into the propaganda. Yep. In your industry, employers have seen an increase in productivity with the work from home model. Exactly. I think the change has started to happen. They will have lower costs on, and overhead this way. Totally. And then when that happens, then we need to start asking for more. 100%. Socialism, blah, blah, workers' rights, <laughs> emotional and mental well-being for the worker. We're pretty radical in here, guys. I'm going to just grab this, I think. I'm going to grab all of this because I want to change the shape to all of the values. I'm going to copy-paste. What my goal here is to just kind of make it a little bit more brain-like, which means kind of curving out the, uh, the cerebellum part just a touch. And we can uh, clean that up a little bit. I'm just erasing out the uh, the outer pixels. Yeah, yeah, I think that's better. And what that'll allow me to do 
is so you remember I, I was telling you that we're painting basically this brain inside of a, this membrane, this sheath that's that's holding it all together, and it'll be a shiny kind of plasticky surface. Um, one of the ways that you can really accent that is having really large breaks in interior uh, forms. And what that allows me to do is that large break, I'm going to be able to put some deep ambient inclusion in there, inclusion, ambient occlusion in there. And then I can hit that area with little pockets of, of light and, and uh, specularity. And what that'll do is show that there's something sitting on top of this thing. And all those little moments put together, your eye and your brain will go, okay, there's a membrane on top of this other substance. So I'm, I'm pre-planning places that will allow me to accentuate a very specific material I'm attempting to uh, indicate here. You work in textiles and the months working from home have been record breaking. One million units shipped a month. That's amazing. Damn. Ah, oh, no worries, Incredibad. In the meantime, we're all brainwashed to think we need more and more stuff. It's actually amazingly wonderful to have less. It's shocking how little we actually need. Irina, you nailed it on the head right there. We have absolutely been sold total horseshit about what we are supposed to need. Um, and what makes a quality life and that's that's probably the, the worst most insidious lie of all is The idea that you need to have the latest you need to have the coolest uh, None of that stuff actually will matter It's a it's a terrible system. I mean you can get by with so so little that costs so much less. I mean, I'm a proponent of this anyways because I've always been a person that's tried to live below my means. And, and it's just habit at this stage. Uh, and the things that they try to sell you, the advertising, the games that they play with your mind, with your emotional well-being, all of it is designed to, to make you more miserable. Yeah, I've definitely found having less stuff has improved my, my contentment and happiness. I like things, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm still a, totally an American in that respect, I, I, or even just a human being at this stage. I love stuff, I love toys, I love my games, but um, I've learned to kind of ignore the impulse to get the latest thing. So that's why I can play, and, and I'll be pretty careful about the games I get. I'll get a game based on its longevity or something that I can support for a long time. I like uh, entertainment that's in those veins. The, 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 tools that I have. I try to get things that will have a great deal of longevity. I try to repair things. Uh, like my phone. I showed you guys my phone from the other day. I'm still using it. Mo I, I imagine the average person would say it's time to get a new phone, but it still works. It's a little bit less convenient, but it works fine. And when I can repair things, I try to repair them. That's, a, that's another cultural thing that's really been lost, especially here in the States, is the idea of, of repair. Like we've been trained to think that that's uncouth and like low class, and it's really not. You wanna have, you wanna have good stuff that can handle being repaired a few times. That's, that's really the real quality stuff. Designed obsolescence, blech. So see how by adding these darks um, and, and kind of creating a little bit more um, texture and form here with these with a softer brush, what it's done is those little those little pockets that look like they were really really dark and standing out are starting to sink into place a little bit better. As long as there's cupcakes. Yep. And notice how a lot of marketing is aimed at reoccurring costs. Yep. I mean, it's it's interesting. If with the right eyes, you can see that they're actually telling you everything that they're doing. They are telling you openly, you should be miserable because you don't have this. You're not good enough because that is not accessible to you. This is the best life. It's kind of
kind of gross. It's weird that it works so well. But it really does work. So, and you know, I'm certainly, I fall victim to this stuff too. I, knowing it isn't the only aspect, one of, but one of the things that has helped me is by knowing it, I am extra, extra, not careful, but extra vicious about uh, when it, when I'm experiencing it, then I'm like, okay, I'm going to turn off. I, I won't watch, you know, like I was telling you earlier with Twitch, when Twitch puts on, you know, like the, the cat litter commercial or something like that, I'll just turn it off. Cause then they're, they're taking your time in a whole different way. That's what this is all about. It's an economy of time. You got to run. Oh, you run your phones into the ground every single time. That's awesome. Same with cars. Same. I am very much the same. I'll run it. I'll run them for a long time. My car, my last car, I didn't, but that was also the only car, the only new car I'll ever have bought. I'll never do it again. It will always be used and I'll use it until, and then make, try to make, take care of it and make sure that somebody else can take it. Critical thinking is sorely lacking everywhere. Uh, I missed something about scrotums, but that is a now a permitted word. <laughs> it's kind of gross. Is Izzy while painting the scrotum alien? <laughs> it's a different kind of gross. That's a real gross. This is just fleshy flesh. Low fat. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome. Glad you could join us. Let's do a. Just carving in right there a little bit. There's something, I, I like the idea of the eye digging into the, the brain meats, but it's not, it's not working so well right there. So we'll let the brain meats overlap a little bit more. So I, I remember that I mentioned, I think when we first started, my plan to uh, do these darks and, and I wanted to really accentuate the lights up here. And then by having a really strong light source up here, where my mid-tone, uh, sorry, where my Terminator began, all of, the, all of the shadow side, I would have a much bigger scale to play with in order to create um, and show textures and, and uh, forms in the shadow side. So this is a purposeful lighting uh, situation specifically just to accentuate the darks. So this is, I have a, an episode on this in the Gumroad about um, uh, controlling your exposures so that you can purposefully have more of a value scale to work with. And that's what we're doing here. We are purposefully making decisions so we have more values to play with in the shadow side, knowing that it's going to be very dark. Now, because we are in the shadow side, it's tempting to just uh, do uh, full shadow for everything. But, but because I'm going to have this greater spectrum of values available to me, now what I'm painting is almost as if I had another light source. So what we're doing is we're implying that secondary light source, this fill light, by only shadowing specific parts and leaving the top side surfaces where this fill light or reflected light or whatever it may be is uh, lightening and, and rounding the form. If you plan uh, and, and think of, sit and think about how you're going to handle something from the beginning. It's a lot easier to, to finish the painting out. You can do it quicker. You'll have more control. 
Um, but it requires a little. It requires just a minute there in the beginning to think. Okay, this is what I'm planning to do with this thing. And that planning stage it helps so much. And it's true uh, regardless of medium. In fact, it's actually accentuated with like traditional mediums. So if you're a traditional painter and you tend to paint uh, with oils or acrylics or something like that, especially oils, I think it can be so helpful to mix your colors before you even start painting mix your big colors so we would mix the we'd mix the mid-tone green the light green and the lightest green and then we'd mix a dark value and then we do the same for every color that we have every base color you mix all of the essentials that would round out that form and then you would mix the color for your light source and you'd mix the color for your fill light and then as you worked and you wanted to add more let's say of the dark the darker green and you wanted to lighten it with the fill light, you would mix in the fill light color directly into the green. And by having that kind of palette control ahead of time, you're going to make your job so much easier. It becomes almost paint by numbers. And you're not struggling trying to mix the colors every time. So pre preparation is a huge part of this. It's like painting a house, you know, it's like put, putting down the tape. That's all, it's all hard work, but once you get that done, everything else just flows. Gets into the culture and people judge others for not conforming to the so-called necessary spending. That's how the companies get you. Yeah. They, it's, they know, they have spent trillions and trillions of dollars over the, the last, you know, decades, centuries, whatever, to learn the best ways to manipulate us. And they're really good at it. And the only way we're breaking free is if we decide that we've had enough. What's sad is they find new ways because they have all the money in the world. They find new ways to, to manipulate us into wanting or needing things, quote unquote. It's, it's a emotional warfare and they are they are the U.S. They're the best funded military ever with that. Corporations, um, advertising. They have all the time and money in the world to find new ways to drag us in. So it's a struggle, no question. Kids moving out when they turn 18, owning a home with a mortgage that you spend twice as much over a 30 year loan, elitist education, the healthcare system, it's all subscribed bullshit to trap us, to be their worker bees. Yeah, full on. Yeah, social dilemma, Dan Rob, that's a good one. I mean, it's, it's certainly been um, made a little bit over the top, but I think that the point that it has is, is absolute, like, they they didn't intend for these tools to be used this way but the machine the machine works and it finds it will always find it has the money to manipulate every system that we create to use against us so you have to constantly be on guard and i mean there's no way that you can uh, completely evade all of the tools and tactics that they have in order to manipulate us And I mean, then there's just being part of a society. That's the other part. When you're just, just being part of it means like, if you want to engage, sure, you can be a hermit and go off out into the woods and never encounter another person again. And you would be completely free of this stuff. I have done this myself. Um, but even then, if you want to be around people, you got to accept some small amount of this until everybody's detached themselves from the matrix, as it were. <laughs> I can't stand the whole concept of red pilling and all of that, but uh, there is there's definitely um, there's a machine at work, and we are the victim. Our money, our time, and money always comes back to to time. That is that one resource. Armando Batista, welcome. Good to have you on. Thank you for the follow. Let's see. Or just batteries in the matrix, yeah. 
Europe is better, but not by much. That's uh, that's 100% true. Um, Europe, there are a lot of countries that have it a little bit better, but those machines that have been, you know, niggling away at us for a long time are now being diverted to those places where uh, things are a little bit better. And you're going to see that that they're going to, if you drop your guard, if you have things good and you drop your guard for just an instant, they'll find their way in. They're always there and they're always looking for a crack. That's one of the things I've been learning over the last, I'd say, decade. These are things I'd always always known to some degree, but really how on guard you have to be, that's been that's relatively new for me. That's what irks you about the argument of the market self-regulates. Absolute croc, 100%. The system by design won't self-regulate. The, the idea that it self-regulates is absurd. That is just the, the worst take. It can't self-regulate. It, it is a perfect machine of taking advantage of things. That's the whole point of it. So it will do anything and everything that helps take advantage. Uh, it does not regulate. The idea, the idea that regulating and self-control are things that are natural is absurd. Like that, okay, it's uh, the market is Darwinistic, I'll give you that. But we are humans and we've already proven, like we've completely broken uh, natural selection that is not how we function we have brought something else into the into the game we've brought empathy we've brought society society requires that you sacrifice a little bit of the natural selection for the greater good of the of a group once you're working for once you're working as part of a group natural selection needs to be altered and it needs to be regulated you can't uh, you can't just count on a market to self-regulate. It will never do it. It's it's kind of a, it's almost kind of an infantile position to hold. I, I I think I don't know. My my economics degree is still in the mail, so <laughs> take everything I say with a grain of salt. Of course, these are just opinions that I've garnered over my years of experience working in and outside of a system and observing listening to thinkers and, and economists and things like that but i am not an expert i just have strong opinions and i'm very vocal and i talk too much and i smell like a potato i'm a potato man How we doing? Oh my goodness, we are nearing three hours, gang. Look at that. I think we'll finish out the three hours. I'm having fun um, chatting with y'all. This has been really, really engaging. Um, and, and I'm having fun painting our weird little weenie creature here. So that's good. Warlock Wit, welcome. What's up? About to grab some food. Just wanted to say hi. Well, uh, hopefully I didn't miss you. Thanks for stopping in, my man. We're fun people. Damn right. <laughs> So fun. We've got cupcakes and a great desire for workers' rights. Nice talk. You're off. Hey, Irina, thanks so much for hanging out for so long. Um, it's always good having you on. Thank you. Have a good night. Get some rest. Good luck on that. Uh, good luck on your project. I can't wait to see the final. I'm really excited. You're in for living alone in the woods. We can have a small cupcake gathering so it doesn't fall under the social label. <laughs> I like the idea of just a bunch of people sitting in trees eating cupcakes quietly and not talking to each other. <laughs> I went over an hour, yeah. Decent chat activity you're garnering, Izzy. Yeah, this is great. I'm, I'm really, uh, this is so engaging. I'm having such a great time uh, talking. Uh, don't forget to raid uh, Paul Scott. He's having his first fireside chat right now. You'll have to go watch the, the uh, video on demand later. Yeah. 
how, you know, I'm so awful at rating, but he, he was so kind and we chatted for a while afterwards last time. So yeah, I will do that when, when I wrap up. We'll, we'll do a raid. We'll try again. It's, I've been miserable, a miserable failure at trying to raid, but we will do it. Um, Paul Scott's awesome. I hope you will all uh, hang out. Um, he's a, a Scottish uh, magic artist. He's, I don't know how long he's been at it, but he's definitely got a community going. And, you know, he's, he's a worthwhile guy to follow. Don't forget to... Oh, no, got that one already. No, nice. You painting that next time. Am I painting the cupcake forest? Is that what you're talking about? Can't, for, can't wait for the critique on it? Yeah. Um, well, let's talk, Irina, on, uh, on the Discord. I still need help planning out what the future of Patreon will be. I've got some options in mind, and then I've seen uh, some of your guys' notes. But... Uh, I'd like to lock that in. I don't think I'll lock it in by, uh, let's see, what's next month? November. It won't be locked in. But uh, December, uh, I'd like it locked in before December so that we can start out the new year with a plan and uh, some sort of kind of Twitch critique class thing, mentorship programs that uh, different people can try out for. I think that'd be great. Reclusive cupcake, cupcake eaters in the forest or in the trees. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Avid, actually, when I'm getting ready to close up, if you're still with us, please remind me to uh, do that raid. Because um, it's one right when I'm near the end, I always kind of, I'm thinking about the next thing I need to do. I'm, I'm kind of bad about that. I'm very focused in the present, but then, and that also means I'm bad at planning. Am I painting on a different layer? What's happening here? What's happened? Why is this happening to me? Ugh. Ah, ah. Hunchback cupcake eaters in the trees. <laughs> I'm definitely a hunchback. This is true. He's got to have his little neck bag here. His little McConnell, I like to call it. Things that are going to be more in shadow will allow to kind of fall away into that dark spot. That value key. I think most of this part of the arm with this one, just this one arm in particular, will stay in the shadow pretty well. This guy will need to do some shadow. But the top side can pick up more fill because it's a little bit more upwardly facing. This is good. I think we're going to we're going to take it to a point, you know, with another 10 minutes or so, we'll take it to a point that's a great stopping point because then it'll be about introducing light and just sh shading a little bit of the rest. We can do most of that really quick in the beginning of the next session. So I think this is this is good. We made good progress today despite my frequent stopping to blab and writing a poem. <laughs> thing I think needs to be a different material so we're gonna have the the skin itself be real rather fleshy and then we'll have the uh, the brain be real shiny and then we'll have a nice little shiny spot right here too I think that will be it's a callback to our you know our source material and also will create kind of a little bit of visual interest in a spot that's that's kind of it's relatively boring area Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I really want cupcakes too, and I can't have them. <laughs> Hunchbag. <laughs> Great voices posted the poem uh, for us on the Discord. That's awesome. Oh, did you actually? Ju I was gonna, I was gonna copy and paste it in here, but you actually wrote it out. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. That, that's mighty kind of you. You did an accurate enhancement to my visage. That's awesome. <laughs> No, this is this has been so fun. I'm so glad I finally got over my nervousness nervousness and did the twitch. It's it's really really fun. His little body crease here needs a little extension so that it fits more accurately. And I want to do one of those cool cast shadow edge things here. Let's uh, grab a dark. You can see how easy it is to just lean extra hard on that smudge brush. Smudge brush. Yeah. So this is another spot where I want to imply some ambient occlusion because also here we're going to add a specular pop, which will imply that there is a substance on top. So. In order to get the speculars to pop for the substance on top, you need to have something darker behind it. Yeah, I know I'm rhyming. I know. It's in my head now. God, he's judging me all the time. God damn it. Okay. All right. So sometimes I leave myself little notes um, in by doing by hinting at little things with the paint and just being obtuse about it and really strong. But I think this time we're actually going to leave real notes for myself for future Izzy. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tell myself. Uh, Strong spot on, let's get rid of the, open up my paragraphs, open up that, and we gotta get rid of this line nonsense. We gotta auto, eh. <laughs> Set it to auto, there we go. Do the line spacing properly. Let's move all of this over to the side a little bit. Strong spot on lower bod. Uh, fill light in shadow. Figure out eyes. I'd say, oh yeah, the membrane. That's That was what I wanted to write about this uh, from the get-go. Membrane, eye spec and cast shadow. So these are all things that I'm missing so far. So actually, this is this is a good example. So I've told you guys before when we're doing crits, why I want you to do do as finished as you possibly can. It's because if, if I were coming at this, for instance, these are the sort of things that I would start 
looking to critique, but those are things that maybe you planned to do, like I'm planning to do right now. So if I was to turn this into my teacher and I say, oh, this is it, then he's gonna say all of these things that I was planning to do. And it's, it, does, it doesn't do me any good. It's just, it's just gonna be me saying, yeah, I was gonna do that. Jesus, ease up off me, you dick. <laughs> Juicy, squishy brain flesh matter, so lovely. Indeed. All right, so let's let me open up a window and see what Paul is up to. Channel. Nope. Shut up, Izzy. Be quiet. Let's see. Expand. Okay, he is on. Oh, he's having a chat. Oh, that's nice. And he's half naked. This is good. Everybody will like this. <laughs> Let's see how many we got. We got 24. So, gang, we are going to raid uh, Paul. Paul Scott. Canavan. Is it Canavan or Canavan? Canavan. I don't know. I'm bad at pronouncing names. But Paul Scott is uh, he's a magic artist. Very friendly dude. Please uh, stick around for a little bit. Let's check out what he's up to. Let's, let's get into his conversation and see what's up. So I'm going to set our... Hey, yeah, uh, before I get into all of that, definitely I want to thank you guys for a great stream. This was a really fun conversation. Um, we made some progress on our goofy little monster here. And uh, yeah, this has been so fun. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will be streaming again for sure on Monday and Tuesday, um, barring any blue screens of death again. Knock on wood. <laughs> when it's not 2, 2 p.m. He reminds you of a creeper, yeah. Um, but yeah, let me set this up real quick. And... Create a channel. All right. Okay, gang. Well, thank you so much again. It was a really great show. I had so much fun. I will catch you next time. Until that day, uh, paint smart, paint sexy. And it didn't even go. <laughs> I will do it again. And now, paint smart, paint sexy. Boosh. Still nothing. You gotta be kidding me with this. <laughs>